It can feel overwhelming to realize that you will have to leave your estate behind, but there are many ways to control the situation. You can ask for a large sum of money or even have the different parts of the estate transferred over to different entities upon your death. Some people, however, would rather just live lavishly and pass away peacefully. Not all of the deceased in this story are quite so peaceful. They often use their deaths to settle old scores, atone for unfulfilled dreams, and even play around with their loved ones. There's not really any limit to what these new dead characters will do just because they're already dead. 10 Unbelievable Last Will Requests in History 10. 70 Names from the Phone Book Luis Carlos de Noranda Cabral de Camara during his brief life amassed a fortune that was impressive by most standards. His estate included the thriving business of the de Borges Company, which traded with Brazil and Europe during its prime. In 1988, he decided to leave his fortune to 70 random strangers out of a phone book. It was left completely bequeathed to him from his estranged family. He spent the rest of his life alone and had very little if any type of friend. Thirteen years later, Luis Carlos died and his will was executed. Lawyers contacted 70 citizens of Lisbon who had all been named in the will and told them they'd inherited 70th part of the estate. Even split up into 70 parts, they still got a huge amount of money. It was a common assumption that the calls were scams, but it's true. One person was able to find a fake company in Nigeria that is in fact a company in charge of selling lottery tickets to hundreds everywhere. He contacted the group and exchanged money for their services. 9. $80 Million Dollar Dog Labenstein was born into money and grew up in an environment that could best be described as privilege. She was a German countess who inherited tens of millions of dollars, but had no family or children to share it with. But she's very different from Luis Carlos when it comes to her lifestyle, upbringing, and the people with whom she surrounds herself. In 1992, Gunther Hummann III's inheritance from her grandfather let him inherit a large fortune not as a person, but as a dog. Gunther Hummann III was given a team to take care of the dog as it grew. While they were never paid much, Gunther and family left them with an inheritance. Since he still had most of his money left, they invested wisely, and as of 2019 the value has grown to $400 million. Unfortunately, Gunther Hummann III passed away before he could enjoy it just like his son was able to do. 8. Make Me a Frisbee In the 1940s, Ed Hedrick lived a full life. He fought in World War II, was a deep-sea welder, and had a career designing toys for many years. He is most well-known for inventing both the Frisbee and disc golf games. It's a good idea that Hedrick stipulated in his will that his ashes be incorporated into the plastic of his series of Frisbees. It would have been a great way for him to spend his old age, and it makes sense to keep such an important memory alive. His son Daniel was quoted as saying, For years, he used to joke about saying he wanted to live on as a Frisbee. We always thought he was joking. Far from joking, Hedrick's wish in actually real, and it actually worked out in the end. He died of old age, and his ashes were spread into eleven discs. Some were given to family and friends, while some were donated to charity. 7. Beam Me Up, Twice You may know Gene Roddenberry as the creator of Star Trek, and by extension, the father of modern sci-fi. His interest in space wasn't purely fantastical, however. He truly admired the cosmos, and he showed it by asking that his ashes be flown to space. Sadly, the remains of this person's loved one and his wish to be reunited with them was not granted. He left behind a lot of people and his legacy beyond what he wished for. As of yet, NASA hasn't been able to launch a mission around Owen's ashes. 6. Display me, sir. Even after death, the legacy of Jeremy Bentham remains. His father left explicit instructions for his posthumous treatment, forcing him to maintain a level of visibility that continues even today. He asked for his body to be buried first, so he could pose in his usual seated position. He then asked that the body be placed in a wooden box with glass on all four sides so that it could be left on public display as long as possible. 
It has been 1,832 since Bentham's death, and he is still a popular subject to discuss here at UCL. Bentham's remains are still here, even though he proposed the auto icon, a mechanical device that sits inside a box, which can be found all around UCL campus. Unfortunately, due to shoddy preservation and repeated pranks, Bentham's head has been replaced with a wax head and locked away. 5. Keep it warm for my return. John Bowman was rich, but also had a caring family. He loved his children and took good care of them after he passed away. After both his daughters and wife passed away, Bowman was alone and decided to do everything he could to honor them. He chose a custom stone mausoleum with a shrine for his family. It cost nearly $75,000, but that would be worth it if should helped him feel connected to the people he lost. After all of the hard work he did for Bowman, he built three statues in the shrine, one of himself ascending the steps, one his family with flowers in hand, and one last statue of Bowman. He believed in reincarnation and was expecting to return to his mansion one day. In case he would not, he allocated $50,000 from a custodian to prepare the mansion for when they came back. The fund lasted for 60 years. In that time, the person who took care of it died, and dinner was placed on the table every day for a while. 4. The All Skin Drums Solomon Sanborn is a well-known figure in history and has made significant contributions to the military and patriotism. He died of illness at the age of 102, but by that time he was already a legendary figure. A few things seem clear from this story. Sanborn was alive when he packed up and set out for Massachusetts, and he later came back alive after the revolution. At some point, he apparently died and had his skin turned into two drums. What's most interesting about this story is how it ended, with both the skin and the drums being donated to science at his request. Did your friend want to know what song to play to honor the memory of the Battle of Bunker Hill? 3. Ashes in your comic One of the most famous comic book writers of all time, Mark Grunewald shaped Marvel for decades with his insight and experience. He has written countless characters, and almost every major character in Marvel history, including Black Widow, Gambit, Iron Man and Ant-Man among others. His love of comics carried on into his death when he wanted to be cremated and have his ashes used to help print a comic. Grunewald did get his wish, but through a different route. He had some of his ashes mixed into ink and printed on one of his favorite series to create a collector's item. The books are popular still, but have seen better days. 2. Mandatory Seances Harry Houdini was as famous as well as successful as an escape artist. He often debunked fraudulent magic tricks and spiritualists, one of his most famous feats. It's probably because he was so eager to let the family know. His last message would be waiting for them in case one of them died first. If the afterlife and mediums were real, then the coded message should get through. If not, then whoever outlived the other was likely to hear from mediums the same cold reading and trickery as usual. Houdini didn't want Bess to conduct any yearly seance. He left her instructions about how to hold them in his will, but she held them faithfully until she passed away. 1. The Great Stork Derby Charles Vance Miller was a Toronto man who owned and slash or ran several businesses in the city, earning him a vast fortune before his death. When it came time to bequeath that fortune, as Miller had no close family, he chose to spread it out in an absurd manner instead of trying to give it all away at once. One clause stipulated that every Protestant minister in Toronto receive shares in his brewery, a Catholic business. Another gave his vacation home in Jamaica to three men whom Miller knew hated each other. George Burns left a large portion of his estate to the woman who had the most children in Toronto's city limits in the ten years following his death. The stipulation was controversial because some people felt it wouldn't be fair for other big families yet other small families. This prompted a reproduction race that lasted ten years, with women who had each birthed nine children finishing in a four-way tie. Thank you for watching. 
You can support us by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. See you soon.